Okay, in today's video, I am going to go over an explanation of momentum and specifically inelastic collisions. And this is what an inelastic collision is. It's kind of the definition of an inelastic collision is a collision where the kinetic energy, the total kinetic energy of the system of, let's say, the two objects is not conserved. So kinetic energy is not conserved. And that is kind of the differentiation between an inelastic and an elastic collision. In elastic collisions, kinetic energy is conserved, but in inelastic collisions, kinetic energy is not conserved. Some of the energy when the objects collide is converted into vibrational energy of the molecules or heat or goes into deforming the two objects when they collide. So some of the energy is converted into other forms of energy. And that means the final kinetic energy is less than the initial kinetic energy, but the total energy of the system is conserved. You have to conserve energy, but the kinetic energy is not conserved. But, of course, momentum is conserved. In all collisions, whether they're elastic or inelastic, momentum is conserved. All right. Now, there are two kinds, just a little more detail here, two kinds of inelastic collisions. There's perfectly inelastic and partially inelastic. What's the difference? In a perfectly inelastic collision, the two objects stick together, and in a partially inelastic collision, the two objects do not stick together. Now, here's kind of the typical perfectly inelastic collision. This is the ballistic pendulum. We take a bullet, we shoot it into an object, it embeds in the object, and that object swings up like that. Now those two objects stick together, and that is an example of a perfectly inelastic collision. Now for a collision that is partially inelastic, you can think of this here as a basketball. The basketball is bouncing off the ground. You'll notice it doesn't bounce back up to the same height because some of the energy of the ball, the kinetic energy of the ball is lost when it strikes the floor because it goes into deforming the shape of the ball or into vibrating the molecules in the floor, but the two objects do not stick together. So there's perfectly inelastic and partially inelastic based on whether or not they stick together. In a perfectly inelastic collision, that's when we have the maximum amount of kinetic energy, mostly due to the fact that the objects are bonding together and there's deformation and changing of shape. In a partially inelastic collision, when the two objects do not stick together, now that is probably the most common form of collisions that we see in our everyday life. Okay, but there are two possibilities, whether it's perfectly or partially inelastic. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to kind of prove to you how the kinetic energy is not conserved, and in this case, we're going to do first how the, well, kinetic energy is not conserved and the momentum is conserved. Okay, so we have two objects, M1 and M2, and they have the same mass, M1 and two, M2 are equal to each other, M1 is equal to M2, and they have the same speed, but they're traveling in the opposite direction. So the speed of their velocity is the same, but the direction is opposite. So V1 initial, the speed is equal to V2 initial, but they're tra traveling in the opposite direction. Now let's kind of conceptually or qualitatively add up their momentum and their kinetic energy. Well, the first object, M1, when we multiply the mass and the velocity, we get a positive velocity, uh, momentum, initial and momentum for number one. And when we add or multiply, excuse me, not add, but when we multiply the velocity and the mass of number two, we get a negative initial um, momentum for number two. Now, momentum is a vector, so it has to have a direction and a magnitude. The magnitude of the momentum is the same, but the directions are opposite to each other. So when we add them up, the total momentum of that system of M1 and M2 is equal to zero, the total. But they are moving and they have some kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is not a vector. Kinetic energy is a scalar. So they have the same kinetic energy. And we add them together, we get that they have like 2 Ke. Okay, so they really that system has no momentum, no total momentum, but it does have some kinetic energy. All right, now after the collision, those two objects have the same mass. 
We're traveling at the same speed in opposite directions. So when they strike each other, it's an inelastic collision. They're going to stick together and they're just going to stop right there in the middle and they're going to not move anymore. And that means that the initial velocity, not the initial velocity, but now the velocity of number one is zero and also the velocity of number two is zero. Now, once again, we're going to calculate, so to speak, qualitatively the, the momentum of each one. The momentum now, the final momentum of number one is zero because it's not moving. And the final momentum of number two, of object number two, mass number two is also zero. So when we add them up, the two momentums, this is zero and this is zero and zero plus zero is that rats, right? You guessed it, that the total momentum of the system is still zero kilogram meters per second. Okay, so that means that you can see when we went from before to after the collision that the momentum was conserved. But what about the kinetic energy? Well, they're not moving. Now, here they were moving, so they had some kinetic energy. Now they're not moving, so the kinetic energy of number one is zero, and the kinetic energy of number two is zero. And when you add those up again, once again, zero plus zero is still zero. And now the system has no kinetic energy. You see, we went from some kinetic energy to no kinetic energy, so we did not conserve kinetic energy. Okay, now I think that's kind of the best, maybe the easiest, the most simplest kind of straightforward way to show you that in that in kind of a non you know mathematical way without doing a bunch of calculations to show you that momentum is conserved zero and zero but the kinetic energy is not conserved because we had some kinetic energy and here we have no kinetic energy all right now we're going to now talk a little bit about the kind of a simple equation or the kind of how we derive the equation for the most common form of an inelastic collision. And the most common example you'll see, kind of the very simple way we start is we have one object that's moving with some initial velocity and we have another object and they're gonna collide into each other because M2 is not moving. Now they're gonna to stick together because it's an inelastic collision and that means they're gonna be stick together like M1 and M2 is stick together and they're gonna be moving off with some final velocity and the velocity of both those objects is the same because they're stuck together like one object, now they have one velocity. So an object is moving, collides with an object that's not moving, and then they move off together. And we're going to show you, that while we know now that momentum is conserved, so we're going to use our conservational momentum and our momentum equation, the momentum is the mass times the velocity, and we're going to sum up the momentum before the collision, and that would be the mass of one times the initial velocity of one, because momentum is mass times velocity, plus the mass of two times the initial velocity of number two. That's the momentum, the total momentum before the collision. Because we have conservation momentum, we can set that equal to the final momentum after the collision. Now, you see I have m1 plus m2 times the final velocity. Now, those two objects are now stuck together. So we have the total mass and a single velocity. Okay. Now, the most common thing you're going to be asked to find, or kind of the simplest, or maybe the first thing you'll usually be asked to find is what is the final velocity after the collision? You'll be given the two masses, you'll be given this velocity, you know the two masses still, and now you want to know what's the velocity when they move off together. So now we're just going to solve for the final velocity. We're going to solve for the final velocity by dividing by m1 plus m2. So that means that m1 times v1 initial plus m2 times v2 initial, that's simply this term over here, divided by the sum of the two masses is equal to the final velocity. Now, this is kind of an overall equation, kind of a general equation we can use to find the final velocity. If, like in this case, we have one object, the second object is not moving, that means that this term is going to be zero because the initial velocity of number two is zero, zero times the mass is zero, and that means if we have a, a situation where the, one of the objects is not moving, then this is kind of the general equation that we can use, okay? This equation and this equation are kind of the same equation. We just eliminated this term because V2 is at rest before the collision. And then it's a little bit interesting to see, I can pull this term out, the velocity initial of number one, and you can see that the final velocity is really the ratio of the mass of number one divided by the sum of the two masses times the initial velocity of number one, okay? So this equation is really good for whether both objects are moving or not. This equation we can use when one object is not moving, and this is kind of just a little bit more of a generalization of that same equation, okay? So now, 
we're going to talk a little bit about kinetic energy, how kinetic energy is not conserved. And so I thought this is a little interesting thing to do about how we can figure out the final kinetic energy and the change in the kinetic energy. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to look at the ratio of the final kinetic energy to the initial kinetic energy. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to take the kinetic energy initial. Now we have the same situation. One was moving, one was not moving. Now the initial kinetic energy, this object has no kinetic energy because it wasn't moving. This object is moving, so its kinetic energy is 1 half m1 v1 initial squared because kinetic energy is 1 half m v squared. Okay, now the final kinetic energy it looks a little bit more tricky, but it's not really that hard. We have 1 half again. Now this is the mass because it's the sum of both masses. So it's m1 plus m2 because they move off together. So this object really has a mass of m1 plus m2. And then its velocity... Okay, now this is the term we had from the previous slide when we, this is the equation we used to calculate the final velocity. Okay, and it's velocity squared, so I had to take the velocity, the final velocity, and I have to square it. Okay, so now we're going to figure out, we're going to eliminate a bunch of stuff. This equation looks a little nasty. It's actually not that bad, but it looks a little nasty, but we can eliminate a bunch of stuff, and we'll see what comes out. It's, I think it's kind of interesting. You can see now we have a uh, one half on the top and a one half on the bottom, so those one halves cancel. You can see here we have a v1 initial squared, and we have a v1 initial, and we have a squared out here, so that means that those two initial velocities at number one cancel. Now the next thing is you got to pay attention a little bit here. You can see that we have an m1 here and an m1 squared, so that means that this m1 can cancel with one of these m1s, so now we have no m1 here, but we still have this m1 here. And here we have m1 plus m2 squared on the bottom here. We have an m1 plus m2, but we're going to square this. Okay, so that means we're going to take this is going to cancel with one of these. So we're going to cancel this. And you can see we're just left with that the ratio of the kinetic energies final to initial is just the in mass of number one divided by the mass of the two. We can cancel that squared because we did all that canceling now. And we get that the, the ratio of those two kinetic energies is simply m1 divided by m1 plus m2. And really what that is, is that's the percentage of the remaining kinetic energy, the kinetic energy that remains after the collision, because that's what the ratio kind of is. It gives you the comet cell, gives you the, the, the decimal, less than one, multiply it by 100, you get the percentage of the kinetic energy that remains after the collision. You can figure out the percentage if you know the initial kinetic energy, the, the percentage, you multiply that, and you can find out the percentage of the how much kinetic energy is remaining after the collision simply by taking m1 and dividing it by the ratio of m1 plus m2. And you notice this is going to be bigger and then this, so that means that kinetic energy is lost in that collision when we take the ratio like that. Okay, so therefore, um, I think that's everything we wanted to do. I kind of went over definition of inelastic collisions. We talked about kind of how we prove, or a little case where we can prove that um, the momentum is conserving kinetic energy is not. We did some equations. We talked about kinetic energy and the momentum in for inelastic collisions. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.